All right, I've been working on a couple of days on a request that I had to make a triangle shaped arrowhead. Uh, I think it's called three sided point on the lithic casting lab site. Three sided point, that's where I'm getting my information. Typical failure here on the breakage and some attempts. This was like my first attempt. Second attempt, third attempt. This one would have been okay if it was thicker, believe it or not. You need a thick preform. Now that's a problem on my trip this time because I didn't bring any really thick preforms or thick slabs except for the hornstone slabs and those are those are precious to me because uh, first of all they're a very high quality uh, for hornstone and second uh, they're wide. I can make wide points. Why would I make something long and narrow? But I think I found found a piece here that I can use The dimensions on these are uh, 10 centimeters for one of them and then 6.6 .6 centimeters for another one 10 centimeters is 100 millimeters. So I got I don't have enough for that one Probably not but for the six Point six, yeah, I got plenty. Um, it's supposed to be six millimeters thick. I got plenty there, but it's getting down. It's getting close there. I really need to have like a full centimeter of thickness. I'm finding out, and I don't have it on a lot of these bifaces that I brought with me. I wasn't really planning on making a long narrow point. I could try to make a short one out of this one. It's tempting. This has got some thickness to it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I've been Tempting it for the past couple days. They were made in different ways, right? Let's see if I can explain. Uh, one way was to use a very flat flake with the dorsal ridge in it, right? Long, thin, flat, not thin, but long flake or blade with the dorsal ridge and just nap up to the ridge with a bevel, just bevel it, bevel it, bevel it, turn it over, bevel it up to that dorsal ridge on the existing flake and leave a lot of the existing side here if you have a perfect blade or flake. Why you would turn a perfect blade that's already a knife into an arrowhead like this, I don't know, but they did. So I tried it with just a regular piece, uh, not with the original ventral side that's flat. I just shaped it so it would be flat. And then it turned out to be too thin to get a proper median ridge. Okay, with the beveling. With the beveling it was difficult to get a median ridge without more thickness here. Now Another way they would do this is to stitch the ridge. But still, again, you need thickness. Stitching means, you know, zigzag the actual ridge. And it was done that way. You know, you nap with a zigzag along the ridge, and that's called stitching, I think. Right? Right along the whole ridge. Some of them were made that way. But the way that they were not made is with a rounded ridge they were not made this way I and mean, the reason why it's rounded on this one is because it's too thin and the flakes tend to roll over the ridge and it didn't roll over too much on this one because it has some height to it compared to the width so it's all mathematics you know you have to have the right height for the width to get the good median ridge going Okay, 
<clears throat> so I think with these two I have some thickness I should have the height to create that ridge I like this one a little bit better than this one because I think this one is raw and it's too pretty to nap well probably I got this one too but this material is really really tough so this one is easier to nap all right I'm getting kind of tired of working it working this material I just did this one here <clears throat> and I'm already starting to get worn out because it's a lot of pressure flaking okay so here we go I'm gonna do a lot of percussion in the beginning Let's see if I can get this knocked out get it shaped first and then hopefully get you a good example going it's quite tedious and why would they take a perfectly good piece long piece nap it down to something narrow you could say well it was effective effective for what <clears throat> uh, this these things were made by what they call the pitware culture they were pig farmers who hunted seals and fished also in the islands of southern Sweden they hunted seals and fished fish probably for its vitamin D and pig farmers because pigs reproduce like crazy so why would you need these kind of arrowheads long skinny narrow arrowheads what are you shooting with this seals maybe maybe they were what about caribou you might say well it doesn't mention anything about caribou in the pitware culture so maybe some of you guys will know and uh, fight it out in the comments or something okay fight it out in the comments I have no idea what they were thinking with these long points they are kind of cool they did make long points like that out of bone so maybe that was maybe the bone would cut was copying the stone maybe the stone copies the bone I don't know it just seems like a lot of waste for something that will break it will break now if we think about it <clears throat> what kind of arrowhead is useful uh, when it breaks I mean you know intentionally made so it does break what kind of arrowhead is that well you you can use it for warfare uh huh we might be on to something a war point yeah it might be a general all-purpose point but a general all-purpose point all you would need is something like this just a simple triangle you know napped thin nothing fancy put a stem on it short so it doesn't break off that's what you would need for all purpose for everything not something like this this leaves something in the body it breaks it leaves a tip inside um, it's nasty <clears throat> maybe it was used to penetrate uh, body armor like thick leather body armor or shields or something maybe it was better for that purpose we don't know I don't know if they were cause of death in graves or not maybe somebody can tell us Anyway, I thought these were interesting. 
So I spent, a, I'm spending a couple of days doing it when I actually should be knocking out arrowheads for the next auction. But oh well. I think I'll have enough thickness. I hope I have enough thickness on this piece. Let's see. <clears throat> it's extremely important to have enough thickness. Because I don't want to end up with the same problem as before. Yeah, I really need to capture this thickness here. This side's too thin. Yeah. It's already too thin right there. It's supposed to be six millimeters thick. So I can't make it that long. I'm going to have to capture this fat area and not this thin area. So why waste the nice material? It's because they had a special purpose for this point obviously. It's very wasteful, very time-consuming, very unnecessary because you can make it out of bone. It's probably more durable. You can hunt seals with it made of bone. If you can hunt seals with it made of stone, you can make your, you can hunt seals with it made of bone too. Now, I'm not using my best chert, but it's getting close. It's close to my best stuff. But it needs a higher quality to ensure the proper shape. Now, did they use indirect percussion on these? Probably not. It's probably all pressure. I'm using it because it's faster, less fatiguing, and it's entertaining for me. <laughs> how some of you suffer through this I lose viewers because of the, the odd behind the knee thing okay <clears throat> I don't care everyone has their own viewer base very little crossover in most cases. Although I do see some of you guys on some other channels that I look at. Did I just clip off the tip there? Anyway. I'm lurking around on other channels and I see some of you guys over there. And I say, what are you guys... No, I don't say anything. I just think, what are you guys doing over here? Anyway, I don't care. <clears throat> All right, 66 millimeter. Is that what I said? Is the smallest one that they found? Yeah, I got plenty.
the thickness though I'm worried about the thickness can I make it longer I want to make it as long as possible I'm right on the edge so I'm starting to get a feel for how thick I need it but I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it anyway if I have to go more narrow to make it look right I'll just go more narrow I think the narrowness is 1.6 this is 1.2 centimeter or 12 millimeter I'm using millimeters because it's easier much easier You know, it's much easier to calculate the width to thickness ratio. It's one to two. Width to thickness, one to two on these. That's right. Twice as wide as it is thick. That's not very good for thinness. Nope, they didn't go for thinness, they went for triangleness. Okay, so we're getting close. I don't have origin one original flat side, so I'm going to have to make one of these sides flat. And I'm going to make this side flat, as flat as possible. Yeah. What am I doing on this side? I'm trying to see where the stem is going to go. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to use some some more indirect percussion on this here just in a just a little bit to regularize it without having to strain too much with the pressure flaking Flatten one side. Here we go. It's not too difficult to flatten one side. I do that sometimes with the regular flint mapping. But it can get dicey if I'm getting too thin. I can't get too thin. Cannot. To flatten it, these flakes have got to go across all the way across. That's a little bit better.
It is a bit lumpy, but I can probably cure that later. Yeah, I don't want to be sending percussion flakes across when it's already narrow. So right now is the best time. Because percussion has a chance of snapping the whole thing in half if I wait. All right, so it's pretty flat. Yeah, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about the stem too much. I still would rather have it flat. So hold on. Have it flat early on. Wouldn't it be better if I lowered the platform? Yeah, probably. Flat, flat, flat. Now, thickness, let's see what we got. Yeah, might get away with it. Might get away with it. Okay. Here we go. Pressure flaking time. Thought it sounded... Thought it sounded shaky for a while there. Like it was, the tip was loose. Anyway. Lots of pressure flaking on this piece or on this episode. Probably won't narrate too much because I can't not I cannot mess up on this beveling. There's no room for error here. That's all it is, is beveling to a center line or to a center median ridge. And then stitching it. Because napping to a median ridge really doesn't create a pronounced median ridge. Um, sometimes it rolls over the top. So to get a, a good median ridge, I think I might have to stitch it, but if it's thick enough, I might not have to. It's kind of close. <clears throat> so we'll see. angle on this bevel has to be just right too. It's possible to mess up the angle on the bevel. Know what I mean? You'll see what I mean in a minute. Alright, so I was, actually I was napping in the wrong direction. Yeah, I napped in the wrong direction, but I think I still am okay. And now I gotta go that way. That's unfortunate. I napped in the wrong direction. Yep, sure did. I think I still have enough width. It was not too smart. 
Well, it's okay, I suppose. Because I didn't go too... I didn't encroach too much into this flat area. Luckily. All right, so I gotta pay more attention. Here we go. Median ridge on this side. I think I'm gonna switch over to a different flaker. Hopefully you guys could see what I was doing. Not that one. This one. With finer flakes. This is a stem on this side. And they tapered down. I made a little foreshaft that I think that they might have used. I attached it in this way. I take more off of this side, but you can kind of see where I'm going with it. Now, I don't know if they half it that way. I'm just assuming. It seems like it would work better if it's, it's got one flat side and one not flat. It's asymmetrical from the side view.
Yeah, it took off too much here. But I can adjust the four shaft to fit. Okay. All right, now it's just a matter of refining it. Okay, I'll refine it on the next segment.